morning. Uh, I'm Grace McCarthy. I'm based in the Irish Universities Association and I focus on Mars Cadastrophy Reactions, which is a program under Horizon 2020. And today I'm just going to break down how enterprise and community organisations outside academia can apply for different schemes within Mars Cadastrophy Theory. So, Mars Cadastrophy Theory is a program under Horizon 2020. It's an excellent science pillar, as you can see down there. And it's dedicated 6.2 billion budget for seven years, as I mentioned, it's in the excellent science pillar. The thing about Mary's Cadastro Curie is it funds all research areas, so unlike other Horizon 2020 programs, there's no topics or call for specific topics you have to follow, you can come up with a bottom up approach. And it's all it's implemented via annual calls throughout the year, so there's three main calls for the non academic sector that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, Mars Cadastro Curie is based on researchers rather than the research itself, so it looks at the training of the researcher, the mobility of the researcher, and the career development of the researcher after they complete a uh, project. So these are the key deadlines. I'll go through these calls in more details now, but it's good to see when they occur. So the ones in green are the ones that's open for the rest of the year. So individual fellowships I'll focus on a lot today because there's a specific part of it that's for the non-academic sector. The deadline for this is the 14th of September 2017, so it's a good time to start looking at it now. The, one of the benefits about it is that only, it, it requires only one organisation, so you don't need a consortium to apply for it. Research and Innovative Staff Exchange, the deadline is in April 5th this year, and it requires a consortium. Innovative Training Networks, the deadline just passed in January 10th. And it does require a consortium, but in the new work program, it will come around again in January 2018. So, Mars Cadastro Security Individual Fellowships, the deadline, as I already mentioned, is in September 14th. What it is, is it means you'll have a fully funded researcher for up to two years in your organization. Um, what I mean by an experienced researcher is they have to have at least four years' research experience or have a PhD before the deadline. There's a mobility rule which I'll go through next. What it means is a cat, the researcher can't have been in the host country for a number of years in order to complete the project. The application must be prepared jointly by the researcher and the host organisation must be the beneficiary. This is because a lot of the application will be about the researcher's qualifications and also the, the capacity of the organisation to host the researcher. So there are different types of individual fellowships and this is where I'll, I'll describe how the the non-academic sector can be involved. So within it, there are European fellowships. There would be a standard panel, which would be for, we'll say, PhD students who want to go to university for two years or a research institution. This career restart, this is for researchers who left research for a few years and now want to come back. There's reintegration for, we'll say, some, a researcher in Ireland who went to Australia for a few years and now want to come back again and do a research project. And then, as of last year, a new panel was opened for society and enterprise fellowships. And this is where a researcher can be based in a, an industry, a small company, a non-profit organization for up to two years carrying out research and innovation activity that suits the organization's needs. And finally, there are global fellowships, which is where you go, a researcher goes away for two years to a non-EU country and come back, comes back for a year to a to integrate and transfer the knowledge they learned to that, that organization brought. So, as I mentioned, the, the enterprise and community involvement, um, as an organization, you can be a beneficiary, which you host or the researcher full-time. If you find that you're, you know, maybe you're a startup company or you think that applying for this is a bit too much, you can always be a partner. And this is where your partner at a university and you can offer a secondment for up to six months for a researcher. So say they're based in a research center, you can say to them, well, they, we can offer them training in our startup, or they can come to us and implement their research and see how, and get business training. Uh, so I'm going to go into more detail about the Society of Enterprise Fellowship. Uh, this as a, it's fully funded, so it's estimated that it's 100,000 per year, it covers research of salary, the employer salary cost, that would be any sort of supervision or management they occur, the research costs, and any management and overhead costs. Um, it's working on a pro it should be working on a project that suits the organization. 
and it also should help develop your research and innovation capacity. And this year the results came out for the first round of the society and enterprise. And we did see a few small, medium-sized companies get funded. So it's not just the big multinationals that can apply for this, it can be startups. And it can be we also saw charities, uh, non-profit organizations get funded as well. So it is it is worth looking into if you're interested in hiring a researcher. So these are just a few of the criteria for if you are thinking about this move. And it's just so that you're not applying and you can see what is required of it. So these have, you need to have, the organization needs to have appropriate research and innovation facilities. So that would be maybe if they have a lab in their organization or a good setup for the researcher to actually carry out their activities. Uh, they should have support for career development of the researchers. So this means that they, at the end, they can't just get the research-specific skills, they must have transferable skills at the end. So that would be working with different disciplines in the organization so, to, uh, so that they can learn, with say, communication skills, business plan development. Another thing that they could do to en enhance this is to bring in outside organizations to part of organization to supply, let's we'll say, training courses. Um, so that would be part of, let's say, the university could offer these training courses on specific research skills, transferable skills. There should also be a nominated person who would be the supervisor or mentor or manager of the researcher. And this is to ensure that they actually do progress with their career development and they actually carry out the research project. And a key part of the application is actually about the supervisor's skills and experience in this research area. And then finally, they must have the financial viability to complete this application. Uh, and also evidence of research and innovation achievement. So they must show that they, with the activities of research are going to do, they have publications on it, patents, uh, products, um, and processes developed. And it doesn't have to be all of you, but you can show that you, they have, you have some background in it to go look to the, to the actual application. So how to apply. So the first thing and the key thing to do is to find an actual researcher to apply for this program. And as I said, they must be an experienced researcher, so that is that they have four years of research experience in a PhD or a PhD, and the mobility group. So for the society and enterprise panel, which I spoke about, they can't have been in the host country for more than three years in the last five years. And that is a flexible one, because usually for the standard, it's one year in the last 12 years. Uh, three years. So that would mean you can hire some, if you have a researcher in your organization already that fits these criteria, they can apply for this. You can also hire a researcher if you feel that the deadline, the, the wait for finding out if you got funded is too long, you can hire the researcher before you find out your, your funded. And you can just make an agreement that, okay, you might not be funded so your contract is until this deadline. Because what we see is the researcher tend, might go away and get another job, so it is good to be aware of that. Um, contact our office. So our office specializes on married to philosophy career options. Well, my role is to work with the researchers who want to apply to the, the non-academic sector and organizations who want to apply for married to career funding. And what we do is we, we do webinars, workshops, we also do one-to-one -one meetings to go through proposals and applications. And finally, we do reviews of proposals. Um, we also help you, we devise the research project which you'll see if it actually fits what, because we've seen so many applications, we know what would work and what wouldn't. Um, also, it would be good to consider collaborating. Now, it's not a priority, but if you feel it will complement uh, the project will say if you think that you don't have enough research facilities to complement it with bringing in a university partner, you can do this too, as they can offer, as I said, training and supplies. So the this is the next call, so this is the Research and Innovative Staff Exchange. I'm not going to go into too much details, you don't have much time. So what this is, it's the transfer of existing staff in an organization to uh, within a consortium around here. So the duration is two to four years. The consortium, the minimum amount would be three organizations in three different countries and sectors. Um, so the Secomments is exchanging existing research staff for periods of one month to one year. So for example, you could have a, an experienced researcher in your organization, you send them to a company in France for five months and they come back and transfer the knowledge back into your organization. And you implement a research project that way. 
The funding is calculated by the number of secondment months you do, and this will cover a top of the researcher who is away salary, so they get about three thousand a month for being on the secondment. We'll also cover the research costs and the management costs of doing all this. And then the enterprise and community involvement is that you can be a beneficiary, so there's a requirement to involve the non-academic sector in these consortiums. So if it can't just consist of all universities, because the supplements have to be from sectors, different sectors, different sectors. So um, it would mean that you could send a staff to a university somewhere, or it could be that you host a staff member from another country. Uh, so the final one I'm going to go through is the innovative training networks. And this is a joint research training network um, which is involving organizations from all different sectors, such as non academic sector, businesses, SMEs, uh, universities. And what the aim of it is to train early stage researchers on, a, on a, a research area so that they come out with experts in this area and also they may come out with PhDs and experience that they can lead in this area in the future and hopefully encourage other more funding into it and also future collaborations. So it's four years duration. The consortium consists of three organizations in three different countries. There are different types depending on what actually uh, suits the consortium. So there's the European Training Network, which is a very general one, that's where you can involve as many organizations as you want from different sectors. The European Industrial Doctors, where you have to have a university that can grant a doctors, and also uh, an organization in the non-academic sector. And each early stage researcher has to spend at least 50% of their time in the non-academic sector in order to get funded. And then there's the European Joint Doctorate, where it means that the researcher comes out with two different doctorates from different organizations, from different universities around Europe. This is a less common one because it's hard to actually get agreement over it between the universities. Uh, early stage researchers are some less than four years research experience and they don't have a PhD. Uh, the whole aim of it is they actually come out at the end with a PhD. So enterprise and community involvement. So the beneficiary, they could be a beneficiary where they host the researcher for the full time and it can be more than one researcher as well. You could have five researchers in your organization for the full term. And also if you feel that this is a huge project to get involved in, that you don't have, you know, you don't have the capacity to maybe write a work package, you could be a partner in this project. And a partner would be that you could actually get an early stage researcher on a secondment or you could provide training courses to the researchers. Um, and short visits, you know, they could come to you work in their lab. So that and it would also just mean that you're part of a network and you can kind of see what it's like the whole organization. So finally, this is the support offered by our office, which I mentioned earlier. So what we do is we inform organizations if you're on our list of upcoming calls in the Marist Podoxka Peer Reactions. We'd also help you propose some preparation and review. So what we do initially is we'd sit down with you and go through your what your idea is and how you fit it to the call. We go through the application. And then closer to the deadline we do draft reviews and we'd send back all the information on how you can improve it. We do not write, but we do show you how exactly you can improve each section. We also do training webinars on far the specific calls. And this is where we go through the whole proposal and we go through each section of the proposal and tell you what should be put in each section because about these applications is the, the evaluators are actually looking for exact information and they have in their, they have a list of what they want. So we we hope to, to be able to get you above we should get you above that threshold so that you your success rate is a bit a bit more achieved. Um, and another thing we do at the moment is we take the actual template and we annotate each of the actual template that you have to apply for so the application and we say exactly what should go in there. Um, it is very useful. Um, and also for the individual fellowships, which fits the society and enterprise call, we do workshops with researchers and the organizations that are actually writing applications. So what we do is we get in a room with um, up to 20 whoever signs up and we sit down with you and we go through all your ideas and this will be early in the preparation of the application. So uh, that's a quick overview of that. You see, I have a stand over um, there's somewhere if you need more information on the calls. <laughs> so, that's it. Thank you.